In 1918, the Isle of Man led the way in electoral reform by the introduction of universal women's suffrage 10 years before the UK. And in 2006, we introduced voting for 16-year-olds. These forward-thinking aspects of democracy in our island are often overlooked and sometimes we take for granted the democratic rights we have. Um, nevertheless, we cannot be complacent and after periodic pressure to rectify certain anomalies, in 2010 the Boundary Review Committee was appointed by Governor, Governor, Governor in Council and asked to undertake a review of the existing constituency boundaries and make recommendations to effect electoral and constitutional reform in this area. Since that time, we've sought the views of the Manx public and presented a series of reports to Tynwald based on what was both practical and possible as a, a constitutional process of evolution. This report draws to a close our committee's work in addressing the remit given to us by Tynwald almost two and a half years ago. And the determination by, Prince, by Tynwald of the fundamental principles that we should apply, not least those of equality of representation and equivalency of the size of constituencies, set the committee upon a path that has led the, the recommendations contained in our re final uh, report. And within the body of this report, we set out the process we have adopted regarding our public consultation upon the issues. And it must be clear that our views have been informed in this process by discussion, debate and consideration, both, both with members of Tinwald, uh, local authorities and members of the public themselves. We recognise that these proposals will not please everyone and indeed a number of people have made their views well known to us. But they, the decisions that we have made and recommendations we are putting forward are made after adhering to the agreed principles uh, that were approved by Tinwald and after trying to accommodate as far as possible within these principles the inherent nature of our communities. It should be remembered that these proposals will change constituency boundaries for election to the House of Keys only um, and that they won't be actually affecting the local authority boundaries which uh, have also been the topic of great debate in uh, the, the discussions we've had in the course of, uh, of our consultation. Um, you will recall that in uh, October 2012 a decision was made by Tinwald to adopt the recommendations in the second report of the Boundary Re Review Committee, which proposed 12 two-seat constituencies. And in our third report, we have set about trying to re make recommendations of where the actual boundaries uh, would be to achieve that objective. Um, so we did take uh, the recent census and electoral roll statistics and we gave instructions to the mapping department to come up with the proposals that are now in, uh, before you. Um, although, as, we, as I said, we did have a consultation um, in January and February of this year where we put out draft plans and that we invited public discussion and we've made um, some s sort of relatively small amendments uh, arising out of those <coughs> discussions, but have taken into account where we can the views of the public and of the uh, members who have made submissions to us. Um, if you wish to ask any further questions, then uh, we'd be happy to address that with you. So what's the reason for the change of heart over uh, the Onkin constituency in, in, in House Lake and Birch Hill? Yeah. Well, the Onkin constituency, um, we put forward a proposal with regard to Birch Hill, which did come up with um, quite strong opposition. Um, we from, took from residents or from, from well from local. Well, I think maybe particularly one of the local members, uh, but also. Uh, from residents in the Birch Hill area. Uh, we did have discussions with Onken commissioners and uh, they understood the, the dilemma that we had, 
because if we are, if we um, have principles for the rest of the island, we have we can't just say that on can is out can be outside those principles. So whilst we understand it wouldn't find favour with um, with some areas of the community. Um, Onken is is effectively uh, a, a bit uh, a bit of an anomaly in in those principles in a way. Um, perhaps anomaly is not quite the right word, but it's it's out. It's got a, a numbers that are too high to fit into the principle. Yeah, the if the numbers. Greater Onken is nine thousand, mm. as opposed to our average number of around seven thousand. Yeah. So there are two thousand, to put it bluntly, too many. Yeah. So the question so, is, where do you move 2,000 and which are the 2,000 that you reallocate to a different constituency? That was the issue. Yeah. So yes. the town strike now said, well, we don't want to be moved, just like Birch Hill. Well, some, some people have put that forward, but not, not so many. Not so many. And, um, and I think that uh, the Groudle area is, is perhaps quite, uh, uh, quite closely connected with Lon and, uh, and that sort of area. So, so. The question is, why didn't you go for Howe Strait? Um, I think that the way we thought of putting forward Birch Hill was because <coughs> that was uh, there had been um, the Onken greater on there was uh, rural Onken and urban Onken at one point, um, and it was it was really just we had to to stick a pin in the map somewhere um, so right. it was not uh, yeah. but but it's it's not it wasn't a fixed in stone it was part of a consultation yeah. process and i think also if i may uh, one we were trying to pay attention to natural if you can have a natural boundary in a built up area mm. so we're using main roads rather than putting a notional boundary through people's gardens or something and our first choice was looking at the main roads that naturally would divide Birch Hill in the way we originally suggested. Mm -hmm. In fact, the same is true about the proposal we've now come up with in terms of using, incorporating house trade and so on. Right. So we'll use main it's road using, road. Yeah. it's yeah. using its most natural boundaries as we can find in the urban environment. This is going to Timwald next week. You've given a briefing to members this morning. How'd it go? Well, I think it went quite well, actually, and I think that uh, we have been careful to consult where we can, and uh, the, the um, perhaps the concerns that some of the members might have had at, at earlier stages have, I wouldn't say that we've persuaded them all, but um, hopefully we'll have persuaded enough for the, them to see that it is worthwhile adopting. Because... There will be vested the interest. Issue, but the biggest issue, Paul, was what should the names of the constituencies be? <laughs> Not where the boundaries should be, but what should the constituencies be called? But there will be vested interests, weren't there, from everyone there, checking their numbers, checking, do we want that in our area? You can't tell me this is not turkeys and Christmas in some degree that... There's well, I think, actually, I think we've gone past that stage, yes. actually. I think, yes. I think that uh, we, we, the principles have been set out and really all we needed to do was draw the lines and we've had the help of the mapping department in uh, looking at the, the, the statistics and mm. they've come up with the boundaries that we can then, we've looked at and said sometimes we'll move that to there or if we've got local knowledge or, or something. I, like I think that. it's fair to recognise that in approving our recommendations in our first two reports, Timwald has taken on reform, constitutional reform, and they should be given credit for doing that. Mm -hmm. In that respect, having got us to this point <laughs> where we actually propose boundaries, we can only do that because this Timwald has accepted a reforming uh, characteristic, if you like, in, in terms of changing the constitution. So they, they, they are to be applauded for that. Mm. I think. Can, can you explain to me, though, what happens next week? I mean, they, is it they vote for or against it, or do they start then picking at it? No, well, the, this is the, the recommendations that we're putting forward um, are that uh, the first one is that Tinwald approves the constituency boundaries set out in appendices C1 to to 12, which are the maps, which uh, I think uh, you've had a look at that are uh, appended to the report. And then the next part of that is uh, the second recommendation, that the representation of the People Act 1995 and other relevant legislation be amended accordingly in time for the 2016 election. But so, can they pick as it's? No, well, the, there are two recommendations, yes. so they, they accept so those it's recommendations. Yes or no. It's yes yeah. or no, yes. And it's, it's no, what happens? 
well, if it's no, then I presume they have to go back and uh, and ask us to consider things again. But I, I don't really see whether how they would do that because it is, as I say, that they approve the plans. We've consulted with them widely. Um, that we don't, we haven't been informed that there are any apart from in one or two cases that there are any major concerns they've not been brought to our attention which they've had the opportunity of doing that so you have moment. Komen supporting this so you've got a pretty well block vol well, listen, vote we are no. we are not appointed by Komen Co no. Com we're a separate an independent um, body and uh, we have been appointed by the governor in council so we're not a, a body that is putting forward Komen's uh, views it's in any way it's fair to say that the chief minister this morning uh, said two things. Uh, one, uh, that it was an independent committee uh, and the report is neither approved nor disapproved uh, by Comin. And secondly, all members of Comin have a free vote. Yes. So who's going to come up with a name? Names are working titles only at the moment. Yes. Yes. How, how yeah. will we get on that? Happen? What we were planning to do was that when it, the matter comes before uh, the legislators on the, under the representation of the People Act. We've put down recommendations, but at that point, either they can put forward specific proposals for names prior to, the, to that bill going to, uh, to Tinwald, or they can debate it at that time, because we don't want uh, our report to be held up, the principles of our report to be held up uh, on what the names are, because we think that it's our belief that, that it's more important to have the the principles adopted and approved and uh, go forward with the, the actual changes to the boundaries. How the, the um, how Tinwald wishes to describe the various constituencies is really a matter for them. Yeah. Well, I guess it's important for the residents. It's important for the residents, and I think that that would feed into the consultation process for the electoral reform there bill. Any particular ones that have been caused. Mm. There's, a, there's, on, there's obviously a leaning, a leaning towards retaining traditional and historical names wherever possible, and there is a suggestion where perhaps some part of country and town are being proposed to be amalgamated that a name is chosen which doesn't lean towards one or the other of the two amalgamated parties. Yeah. So there appears to be fairness and balance. So we felt that that was a better debate to be had once the actuality of yes. we're having 12 twos in this shape and form has been agreed. Yes.